How lovely is Christmas with boughs in the hall When bells ringle jingle and friends come to call How lovely is Christmas with joy on the wing While under your window the carolers sing God rest ye be merry, give peace while you may Remember the child who was born on this day How lovely is Christmas with songs in the air A bright Merry Christmas Dear friends everywhere You know there have been almost 2,000 Christmases since that first one so many years ago but the one I'm thinking about right now took place more than a hundred years ago in the dark wilderness of western Kentucky. See, there was this cabin all by itself at the edge of a forest. Next to the cabin was a clearing in the woods, but the clearing wasn't near big enough because the father had only one axe and he had to do all the chopping by himself. He had a wife, though, and a little boy. His name was young Jethro. Young Jethro was... Trying, you know, to help as best he could, but how many trees can a small boy chop down in one day? <laughs> Not very many. He's lucky if he gets a few bushes, especially if you don't have an axe of your own. So young Jethro used to say to his pa, I sure wish I had me a magic axe. I'd pitch in there and I'd chop away an acre or two in no time at all. Then we could have a fair-sized garden patch and maybe some space for an apple tree. That's what young Jethro dreamed most about, an axe and an apple. Is that all you want, an axe and an apple, his pa asked him. Well, said young Jethro, I sure got me a hankering for something else, but I hate to be asking for things that are hard to get. Well, his father didn't ask him any further, but the thing that young Jethro was really hankering for was a buckskin jacket. You know, one of them with fringes on it. Sometimes, like when he thought there was nobody around, you could hear him singing to himself like this. An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket. Oh, what a sight they be. An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket. That's all I want for me. Well, you don't want much. Just a little bitty bit. I'll say you don't want much. Just a little bitty bit. You don't want much. Just a little bitty bit. So what do you think you're gonna get? An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket. Take one and two, make three. An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket under a Christmas tree. Oh, you don't want much. Just a little bitty bit. Oh, you don't want much. Just a little bitty bit. You don't want much. Just a little bitty bit. So what do you think you're gonna get? Now, this cabin uh, I told you about was so remote from any kind of a store. And Jethro and his pa had been so busy trying to clear out that field that, well, nothing much had been done about Christmas. But long about noon of the day before Christmas, the father said to young Jethro, he said, son, you better start to get ready now. We're all going on down to the store with a few eggs and see what we can swap them for. But young Jethro, who still hadn't figured out what he's going to give his folks for Christmas, said he didn't think that he wanted to come along. Fact is, there was nothing young Jethro liked better than going down to that store, but he also wanted a chance to be alone, to, to work out some kind of a surprise for his ma and pa. Well, said his father, you just do what you think best. You got your dog Pepper here for company. We'll be back before sundown anyhow. So young Jethro, he stayed behind while his ma and pa hit it out through the forest. What am I going to get Ma and Pa for Christmas, Jethro asked himself. I know what. I'm going to chop down all them trees and pull up all them stumps. By the time they get back, there'll be plenty of room for a garden patch. 
maybe some space for an apple tree. So he grabbed hold of his paw's axe and he crossed to the first big tree. Well, the axe was too big and young Jethro was too small. All he could do was just make a few nicks in the side of that tree, hardly peel the bark off. Well, as he was chopping, a few flakes of snow began to fall. You know, evening and darkness always come sooner when it's snowing, and soon it was snowing hard, and young Jethro said to himself, Well, well Ma and Pa sure ain't going to get back before sundown. This, this snow will hold him up. So he went back to the cabin, and he waited at the window. Hours later, hours later, there was still nobody in sight. The snow had stopped and the moon was out. The trees were bent low with the weight of the snow and one of the biggest trees looked like a huge lumberjack with snow on his mackinac. One of the smaller trees, a kind of bushy one, looked like a man with a pack on his back. One of the trees with some icicles clinging to its branches looked like a frontiersman in a, in a buckskin jacket. The icicles kind of looked like fringes. Was he dreaming to see such things? Well, it's kind of hard to know, especially around Christmas time, when a boy is dreaming and when he's awake. Boy had a window, a dream in his heart. What's in his dreaming, a pony and cart. Boy had a window, a gleam. What makes that gleaming a star in the sky? He can't tell a soul the half of his plan. Dream, little boy, scheme, little man, boy. A window, if only he knew somehow, someday his dream will come true. All of a sudden, young Jethro thought he heard a knocking at the door. But when he opened the door, all he could see outside were a huge pair of boots. He looked up, and he saw a pair of legs, and he looked even higher, and there was a man as tall as the tallest tree. Who are you, young Jethro asked. Paul Bunyan is my name, the fellow said. I brought you an axe, a magical axe, just your size, too. Well, old Paul Bunyan reached deep into the pocket of his mackinaw, and he took out an axe. In his hands, it looked like a little bitty old hatchet. He handed it to young Jethro, and it was just the right size. That's truly a magical axe, said Paul Bunyan. It'll chop down any tree in seven strokes. You try it. Well, young Jethro looked at the axe in wonder. Gee, if it really worked, he could clear the field before his ma and pa got back, and that would be his Christmas surprise for him. He walked over to the biggest tree in the whole forest, and he began to chop. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Young Jethro swung his mighty axe. That axe was mighty fine. And when he swung that mighty axe, down came a mighty pine. A timber here and a timber there, I heard young Jethro call. A timber here and a timber there, oh see that timber fall. Young Jethro saw a mighty fir, it nearly touched the sky. Young Jethro swung his mighty axe, now hear the mighty cry. A timber here and a timber there, I heard young Jethro call. A timber here and a timber there, I'll see that timber fall. Timber! 
Young Jethro swung his mighty axe. Paul Bunyan showed him how. They helped to clear this land of ours so there'd be room to plow. A timber here and a timber there. I heard young Jethro call. A timber 